Welcome to the K-12 Plus series of educational videos. This video is meant to be an overview for the Play Mendel module. For accompanying teaching materials and resources, please visit us on the web at www.abrcoutreach.osu.edu. For this experiment, you will need all the materials necessary to grow plants, including soil, pots, and trays. You will also need the seeds provided in this module, an optimizer or magnifying glass, a pair of tweezers, saran wrap, and tape. This module has been designed to teach you Mendelian genetics and heredity by having you cross plants of different genotypes. Specifically, you will be analyzing a previously performed cross between AG1 heterozygous mutants and comparing those to wild-type Landsberg plants. Additionally, you will be performing your own cross between wild-type Columbia and GL1 mutant plants. Thus, each group in this experiment will have four pots of plants. Start by measuring the soil you'll be using into a Tupperware or other container. Then, use your hands to break up any clumps and remove any debris from the soil. Leave it as smooth as possible. Depending on the soil you're using, you may also choose to add a slow-release fertilizer, such as Osmocote, to your container. Next, add water to your soil and use your hands to mix it in, ensuring that the water is evenly spread throughout the entire soil container. Now it's time to prepare your pots. Start by placing a piece of cheesecloth at the bottom of each pot. This will keep your soil from escaping when you water them in the future. Next, you should scoop soil into each pot. Try to use your hands to pat down the soil. Your goal should be to fill each pot all the way to the top. As always, make sure to label each pot. Include your group number, the date, and of course the genotype of the seed you're planting. In this experiment, you should have included AG1, Landsberg, GL1, and Columbia genotypes. Now you're ready to start planting your seeds. Start by sprinkling your seeds on a wayboat or other plastic container, and use a pasture pipette to add water and mix the seeds by pipetting up and down. This will resuspend the seeds, which will allow you to place each seed drop by drop on the soil. Try to include nine seeds for each pot of soil. Once you're done planting all your seeds, place all the class's pots into labeled trays and cover them with saran wrap. The saran wrap will keep the soil from drying during the stratification step you'll be doing next. Place the trays inside a cold room or refrigerator for at least two to three days for stratification. After three days, you can remove the trays from the cold room and place them on a light rack to grow. Make sure to remove the saran wrap from each of the pots and water them whenever necessary. For the next few weeks, allow the plants to grow largely undisturbed. Notice how after four weeks, the plants will begin to bolt and flowers will start forming. You may choose to tie down some of these flowers to sticks, though this is entirely optional. After about five weeks of growth, take the time to observe the phenotypes of the different seeds you planted. For example, Notice how the AG1 mutant flower exhibits the double flower phenotype in which the stamen and pistil of the normal wild-type Landsberg flower are instead replaced by additional petals. Notice also how the GL1 mutant does not contain the leaf hairs normally present in the wild-type Columbia and wild-type Landsberg leaves. Observe the frequency with which each of these phenotypes occurs. Notice, for example, how many plants in the AG1 pod Exhibit the double flower phenotype and determine the ratio of mutant phenotype to total number of plants. Compare your results to that of other groups in the classroom. How does yours compare? Combine all the results from the classroom and obtain a final ratio. Based on this observed ratio of mutant flowers, determine what type of cross likely created these plants. Is the AG1 mutation dominant or recessive? Discuss your results with your teacher and make sure to look in the Play Mendel protocol for additional help and exercises dealing with Punnett squares. During the next part of this module, you'll be performing a real genetic cross between the wild type Columbia and GL1 mutant plants. For these crosses, you will need your optimizer, a pair of tweezers, some tape, and a marker. Start by putting on your optimizer and try to observe a wild type flower. Use your fingers at the base of a flower to try to steady it and keep it in focus for the next step. 
For the next several moments, you'll be trying to use your tweezers to slowly peel back and remove each of the sepals and petals of the flower. Your goal is to remove nearly all the petals and reveal the inner pistil and stamens. Make sure to take your time and go slowly. This is not an easy process and it may take several attempts before you get a flower that works. Once you finish removing all the petals, start removing the stamens. Your goal is to remove everything on the flower, leaving only the pistil. Make sure to keep track of this flower as it will be the female in the cross you're about to perform. Next, grab a flower from the GL1 mutant plant with your tweezers and try to pollinate your female flower by touching the stamen to the pistol that you are holding. Again, go slowly and be careful, you do not want to damage the flowers. Make sure to label your crosses by wrapping a small piece of tape around the flower you just pollinated. This will help you keep track when you come back several days later to confirm that your cross has worked by seeing the formation of siliques. Depending on your teacher, you may be asked to keep these seeds and follow the crosses through the F2 generation. For more information on how to continue this experiment, as well as additional assignments and figures, please read through the Play Mendel Module Protocol. For other tools and resources related to this experiment, as well as other modules, please visit us on the web at www.abrcoutreach.osu.edu.